Today there has been a ton of news regarding Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and Crisis Core Reunion. And you'll want to hit that subscribe button because we also got more Final Fantasy XVI news coming next week. It's going to be an incredible month for Final Fantasy fans as a ton of news is on the horizon. Starting off with Crisis Core Reunion, a game where everyone's expecting some sort of new story element. However, according to the game's producer, this is a fateful retelling, with him being asked, quote, Part of what made Final Fantasy VII Remake so beloved was that it offered a closer look at fan-favorite characters and had new and exciting experiences. What kind of new experiences and changes can fans expect to see in Crisis Core Reunion? Sato Crisis Core Reunion is actually going to be a faithful retelling of the original story, so there is no additional story content. With regards to the visuals, the game assets were created all new, from scratch, and we balanced the game so that it's easier and more intuitive for players to play on modern consoles, and kind of have a good gameplay experience in current times, so that's something to look forward to. In terms of new gameplay, it's been confirmed that a new dash function has been added, as well as shortcuts to magic abilities. Most importantly, you'll be able to skip any sort of cutscene sequence that's started by the digital mind wave, something that you couldn't do in the original, which terribly disrupted the flow of combat. Unfortunately, it still will be there to disrupt it, but not nearly as bad as it did before. And, uh, actual combos instead of just button presses, which, thank god, this is probably the only action game I've ever played where there weren't actual combos, which may sound strange to those of you who never played it, but those who have know exactly what I'm talking about. However, the most important bit of news here is that he's saying that the story will not be changed. For the most part, I believe this to be true. The main story will indeed be a shot-for-shot -shot remaster. However, I find it hard to believe that there won't be any sort of extended ending or new epilogue, especially considering that they're going out of their way to revoice the entire game. Of course, this doesn't outright confirm that there isn't any sort of new episode, but it does suggest that at least the main story of the Crisis Core that you remember will be intact. And apparently, this is going to be an incredibly important story going forward, with Nomina saying in an interview with PSU, quote, with regards to the Final Fantasy VII Remake, people who played it know that Zack has a bigger role in Remake than in the original. And so if players play Crisis Core Reunion, then Crisis Core is positioned as a prequel to the Final Fantasy VII Remake story. As you might have seen in the preview of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Zack is going to play a larger role in the story than in the original. And so it would be great for people to go out and play Crisis Core Reunion to get full understanding of the character and the whole storyline. It looks like the copium on this one has finally run out. Nomura is explicitly saying that Zack is going to play a much larger role in Remake than he did in the original, and he wants you to play Crisis Core first because all the stuff going forward is not going to be from Crisis Core. Again, the amount of evidence that Zack is indeed alive now in Final Fantasy VII Remake continues to mount. While I am sure that many people are still going to hold on to their Zack is in the live stream theories, or he still won't have a huge impact on Cloud's character arc or anything like that. If you want my personal opinion, which I assume you do since you clicked on the video, it just seems more than likely that Zack is indeed alive and he is going to play some massive role in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And with him wanting people to play Crisis Core Reunion before they play Rebirth, a game that spoils the biggest plot twist in Final Fantasy VII, suggests, yet again, that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is not going to be really the same exact story. While all the rendering for Crisis Core Reunion is set to be happening on Unreal Engine 4, the game's programming itself still uses the original PSP scripts in order to run the game. Currently, it's unknown if Final Fantasy VII Rebirth will be using Unreal Engine 4 or Unreal Engine 5, however. Speaking of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, we got some brand new news. Much of this news comes from Famitsu, and shout out to at Xenosaga7 for providing translations. Starting off with the fact that the order in which you visit the locations in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is going to be different than in the original. This is something that I've been predicting for quite a long period of time, as this gives them freedom to choose the locations that are most relevant to Rebirth story, rather than sticking to the progression that the original game had. The fact that you'll be visiting locations in a completely different order 
alone suggests that this story will be playing out in quite a different manner. They've also confirmed that none of these locations will be cut. And with three full Final Fantasy VII Remake games, absolutely nothing better be cut, as there is plenty of time to explore all of this. So it's great news to hear that everything is going to be in there. Although one of the more shocking bits of information is that the project wasn't always going to be three games. In fact, it was originally being considered to make it a duology. That is, just two games. Nomina also clarifies that they never planned to go beyond three installments, however. But originally, just two installments was considered. Currently, there are no plans to remaster Dirge of Cerberus, although they are considering it. Any type of rework of Dirge of Cerberus will require a lot more budget than Crisis Core did, that's for sure. But honestly, with Crisis Core out now, I can totally see Dirge of Cerberus remake, remaster happening in between part 2 and 3. And finally, the next Final Fantasy VII Rebirth trailer will contain far more significant information than the initial teaser. That of course should be expected. Again, this seems to indicate to me personally that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth will be taking quite a different direction. Undoubtedly, some people will love that, and some people will also hate it. While I give an opinion here and there, I won't give my full, unabridged take until it's all out. And that way I can feel like I've truly set my peace without any conjecture about speculation of where things are headed. Such conjecture makes it really hard to critique or honestly even praise a lot of aspects about the remake project. But I'll say this much, it's gonna be really interesting to watch all this unfold. And currently, I'm expecting a story that is very much unlike the PS1 classic, that will remain faithful to the characters' stories. I think the authenticity of the characters will remain the same, but if that will extend to other aspects of the story such as its themes and messages, that, from my perspective, is still a to be determined. So we'll just have to see when Final Fantasy VII Rebirth finally launches next winter. Shout out to patron Amber Loringer and the rest of the Ultima community. Thank you.